what I think a lot of people will say to this so far is that like, of course they want to go back and just feel like a baby and just not pay attention to what's going on in the world and not take a stand for anything, but they have to, they have like for the sake of all the lives that are being threatened, they have to pay attention to what's going on in the world and they have to take a stand and fight for what they believe in. Why? So you can copy that suffering onto others, like fight for what you believe in. Like I believe in this, so why don't, and it's caused me lots of suffering <laughs> and resistance and insistence and disease. So I want to make sure everybody knows that this is the truth so they can also suffer. Why, why fight for what you believe in? Well, people start to fight for what they believe in, in a environment where everyone else is already fighting for what they believe in. So it's not that they, they know the alternative is, oh, if I don't fight for what I believe in, it's just completely peaceful and we're living in utopia. It's like, everybody's out there fighting for what they believe in. I now have to fight for what I believe in to even, to have a shot at changing the world or making a difference and going back to feeling like a baby and thinking and just ignorantly blissing out while the world is going to shambles would be completely irresponsible. Well, you, I mean, I'm saying this from a more of an end station end game perspective of having followed this threat that I'm beginning to lay out in this uh, podcast. But when you follow this thread, you might, you might end up saying something similar to this, which is you'd be surprised how effective it would be at changing the world. If everyone became ignorant again, like a baby, innocent, blissful, happy, for no reason. But other than giving up its insistence upon all of its points of view and its perspectives, and unburdening itself by unknowing everything that it's been accumulating throughout its life in terms of perspectives and concepts. And I understand most people equate this to giving up their free will, or giving up their rights or giving up their intelligence and like becoming a dumber version of themselves. But I think I'm smarter than I ever was before. As a result of this process, it may not seem like it doesn't seem like I've unknown the things that I've known. Um, because I can talk about all kinds of concepts and topics and have a fairly intelligent dialogue. Most of the most of the time, if I want to. Um, so it doesn't mean that we lose our capacity for intellectual capabilities. It just means that there's no insistence, there's no energetic, emotional insistence. We don't need belief systems, for the most part, in the ways that people use belief systems, we don't need that in order to be happy, to be functional, to be wise, to be smart, to be clever, to be balanced, to be loving, to be caring, to take care of things, to prevent certain things from happening, to ensure other things do. All that is logical and common sense. What we mix up is we think intelligence means emotional charge. We think it means emotional content. We think that intelligence means we have to fight something, we have to believe in something, we have to feel the pain of it and so forth. What we don't. And I'm only saying this because I have, su I have suffered a lot um, in my own psychology. So that gave me a perfect opportunity to dissect it and to get to the bottom of it. So I'm not seeing it from a state of not knowing what it's like to be completely lost in an emotional uh, tunnel of uh, darkness and depression and what have you. I know what that's like. And so I understand, but it's not the solution. And it doesn't lead to intelligence, and it doesn't lead to happiness. And it only leads to more warfare. So for me, from the place that I'm looking at things from currently my current state of being, I'd say you'd be surprised how effective it is if people become more baby like energetically, it doesn't mean you lose all capacity, like, Oh, what's it grocery <laughs> store? I've never seen a grocery store. Before. The common sense is still available. Your conceptual memory data bank is still available. But the way that you approach it is from a state of innocence, not knowing not being so confident in what you think, you know, being more confident in the openness that there is much more intelligence available. And all you have to do is be absolutely open to it and receptive. And you can't be receptive if you think you know what you know is the truth. That's insistence, that's digging your heels in, that's creating the resistance between the wave and the rest of the water surrounding it. 
So again, the intelligence of, of the rest of this intelligence that surrounds us and permeates us, unseen, metaphysical, uh, metaphysically speaking, is, again, that friction is what's generating emotions. So every time I insist upon a point of view, that's not in alignment with the truth, the truth of the intelligence of something that far supersedes, sorry, not supersedes, the intelligence of something that far exceeds my rational intellectual capacity, because I didn't create the stars with my conscious mind. I didn't use my intellectual conceptualizing capabilities and put planet Earth in its perfect orbit, right? Did you? Did you? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> Good. Uh, do you? No. So, right, we are have limited, all we have, what we call intelligence is simply the ability to respond to what we see in a third dimensional way, sometimes fourth dimensional to a degree, and, and react and respond and form images about what we perceive. All we can do is react to this current manifestation that we have. And then we, we believe in that so much that we're blinded to the fact that that's not really the source of intelligence. It's not really the way to be intelligent. The way to be intelligent is to be a conduit, to be a vessel, to be empty of our own knowledge, to not eat the apple from the tree of knowledge, to stay innocent, to stay in the state of unknowing, perpetual unknowing, perpetual humility, inward humility, and outward humility, to the point where this intelligence can begin to inform us through us because we become an empty vessel, we become a wave that's not resisting its direction. And so it's reaching the shore in perfect timing, every motion is in perfect rhythm, in rhythmic harmony with its wholeness, wholeness is intelligence, separation is dumbness, or ignorance. And it's causing emotional, psychological and physical pain. Because we act based on this emotional energy. And then we inflict our emotional energy in the form of physical energy towards others, because we don't know how to deal with it. Because we think we know what we know. We think we're right. Mm. Righteousness is humanity's greatest burden and obstacle at this point. So innocence is exactly what we need. Mm. Unknowing what we know is exactly what we need. 